We are at Sacsayhuaman Archaeological Park, located 30 minutes north of Cusco City, at an altitude of 12,142 feet. Sacsayhuaman means satisfied falcon. This is a colossal structure built on a strategic location on the top of the mountain with a clear view of the former imperial city, also known as the neighbor of the world. A megalithic structure is considered a prehistoric structure, mostly located in Western Europe. For prehistoric, we understand it before written records and divided in three periods, the Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. Sacsayhuaman is a prehistoric structure considered to be in the Stone and Bronze Ages. My name is Giacomo Longaro. Welcome to my channel. If this is a Bronze Age culture, how come this section of the rock has been vitrified? What kind of tool can hit limestone like this? Whoever built Sacsayhuaman also built the whole megalithic enclosure in Hatun Rumiyoki Street, where the 12 angle stone is located. Just look at this. This is the same technique of mortarless precision on concave convex pillow like shaped stones that we can see in Sacsayhuaman as well. These ancient architects were the responsible ones to design this site, removing tons of dirt, flattens its three levels without any written record as guidelines, move and transport stones of 250,000 pounds with ease and made them fit like a gigantic puzzle. Let's consider that the concept of megalithic is mostly centered in Western Europe. Who can explain this model of construction was conceived in the South American Andes? Or it was the result of a prehistoric migration in remote times? There are no records of any kind of the architects in charge, no drawings in any ceramic or similar in any textile, even in Kipus which there are the records of a counting system made of cords and knots that the Inca used to use. For example, look at this large cylindrical stone used as a filler between the typical massive stones on both sides. For me, it looks fake 100%. It's highly probable, an ancient concrete. For example, on the top left side, you can see a spatula or a flat rectangular tool was used here to spread a plaster-like material or ancient geopolymer. Even though the surface is subject to erosion, it still has the typical marks left by a tool. Due to the horizontal back and forth, left-right movements, these marks are in front of us. Sometimes we just have to take a look twice to discover them. These ancient architects custom carried and bend the rocks that fits perfect without mortar. This mind-blowing technique has little to do in relation with the tools displayed in museums. The same Incas were aware of the existence of these constructions way before settling in Cusco. Peruvian historians agreed that the Incas rebuilt and restored several temples, and according to the official statement, the mysterious Tilke culture was responsible for its design and construction, but 200 years before the Incas arrived in the area. But from whom or how the Kilke culture was able to achieve such sophisticated megalithic concept and build such a woman, not in the Cusco Valley, but on the top of a steep hill to make it more difficult task. Without the presence of wheels and strong big animals, just by error and trial, by chipping the stones, pull by cords and place them softly, like a feather? To make them fit perfectly, the problem here is that one broken angle and the stone made it for that purpose was almost useless. Look at these wall shoring techniques. The wood poles marks are located at the center of the stones, are a clear example used by these ancient architects. Sometimes they use spatulas and other wall shoring techniques like in any construction. The idea of an ancient formula based on a plaster to be applied on and spread on stones to correct any human error makes sense. And it's supported by oral tradition of plant extracts that quote, melted stones, quote. I realize 
the Academia, mostly archaeologists, will not take an extra step to find out answers to valid questions related to the construction of sex a woman. There are few experts aware of the ancient technologies in Cusco archaeological sites, but those few won't go against the established consensus. As for me, one of the good examples of ancient geopolymer has been always in plain sight. I'm talking about the snake that was probably filled with gold and precious stones. This is a popular site for pictures, but now it's going to give us some clues on how it was carved. The snake is located almost at the very end of the typical tour on the second level. This is the only carved figure in Saxa Woman, although we don't know if there were others. In this close-up, you can clearly see a typical scooped movement from its insertion into the cement, from inside out, compared with a picture I took from the Kurikancha temple. It has been done step by step, or I should say scoop by scoop. These are not the classical hammer and chisel work in a stone. I am sure a sculptor or a stonemason would agree that at least those marks were done by one single tool with no signs of percussion. And it shows the only way that rounded concave carvings is when the material or plaster was in a semi-solid state. Another close-up and you can see the high relief engraved all around the head of the snake. Some degree of force and a bigger tool was used for this section. Again, no signs of percussion done with a hammer or chisel. Here we have a final closer look of the snake even though the signs of erosion are obvious. The scoop by scoop portions of the carving gave us a better understanding of different construction techniques than by ancient architects. With a universal technique nowadays known as geopolymer, used by vanished civilizations that once ruled the world. If you like this video, please subscribe and share. Thank you so much. Until next time.